Welcome to the Israel of God Bible Study Class, where our pastor's brother, Henry Boyd. Today's lesson is titled, Faith Comes by Hearing, but Obedience Through Fear. And now, our pastor, Brother Boyd. To the people that are watching us live on the internet, good morning. And as always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, sisters and brothers, we looking around and we seeing what's going on in the world. And this lesson that the Lord had me to put together at least 20 years ago is on time. Why is it that we don't have the people are allowing everything and getting further and further away from the Bible and the one that talks about it use it for their own gain? Because they don't fear the Lord, sister. Right. So the Lord had me to put this together. It's titled, Faith Come By Hearing, But Obedience Come By Fear. Faith Come By Hearing, But Obedience Come By Fear. How many times have you heard me say that uh, I have loved people that I have loved, I have wronged at times. But peop- and I have crossed. But people that I am afraid of, I ain't never crossed. Because I fear them or what they might do to me. It's the same way with the word of God, sisters and brothers. They have taken, man have taken the fear out of the word of God. The Lord loves everybody. Everything is okay. Once you've been saved, you always saved. God don't do no evil. And he won't hurt nobody. And I always ask the question, is that the case then? Why is it that he have a lake of fire? And when people hear the word fear the Lord, a lot of the churches I hear preachers talking about say, we need to stretch that fear out and put love there. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, I'm going to tell you the real truth. Fear trump love every time. It's all that simple. Even if you have somebody that you really love, and if somebody was going to do them some real harm, you might put yourself in harm way because you feel that they might be harmed. But when it comes to love, it is always good to back it with a little fear. Now we're going to deal with what Jesus said, start this out. Let's go into Luke, the 12th chapter, sister and brother. Because this is the kind of stuff, you know, people always Christ this and Christ that, but Jesus says stuff and nobody listens. They don't even quote it, neither do they teach it. Because everybody is on a love affair. And everything is going down the toilet, sister and brother. You know, you don't, you, you're serving of God, but you, everything is okay. What God did in the Bible, you know, we, you know, we don't have to talk about the Bible. See, we're in a different time and a different generation. I'm going to tell you something. The Lord is warning everybody, and he's being merciful. But if you don't heed the warning, sooner or later, his mercy is not going to be there. You're going to walk away from it. We're going to start at verse 4. Luke 12 and verse 4. 12 and 4. Okay, read it. And I say unto you, my friends, Uh be not afraid of them that kill the body. Uh And after that, they have no more that they can do. Now, this is Jesus talking. He said, don't fear those that can kill the body. Because once they do that, they can't do nothing else. But I'm going to tell you who to fear. Go ahead and read. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Go ahead and read. Fear him which after he hath killed Uh hath power to cast into hell. Fear the one that after he hath killed can cast you in the lake of fire. That's the one you fear because you can't die and get away from this guy. No, he will wake you up and kill you forever. And this is what people got to understand this, sister and brother. He said, I forewarn you. Yes. Jesus gave you a stern warning. This is the one that you fear. Fear the one that after he have killed yes. can cast into the lake of fire. But Lord, know this man, sister and brother. The Lord know his creation. He know that if you don't fear him or fear the one that stand represent him, you ain't going to obey nothing that he say. He even have a sisters and brothers that when he send leaders and ministers, I'm talking about real ones, 
He know he had to put the fear or the dread of the people of this person on them. Otherwise, they ain't going to obey or follow him. That is right. It's all that simple. And I'm going to show you a good case in point. Let's go and look at Joshua. Let's go into Joshua, the third chapter. Look, sisters and brothers. The people got to the point where they feared Moses. Therefore, Moses could control. And the one they couldn't control, the reason the Lord, they feared him, because then the Lord would kill him. You understand? They rebelled against Moses. The Lord ate some with the, with, with the uh, uh, earthquake. Some of them he killed with lightning. Some of them he killed with snakes. After a while, they learned to fear, sisters and brothers. This is the whole thing. Now, when Joshua got ready to take over, the Lord knew that if these people did not fear Joshua or fear the power of God, that Joshua will, because that's what it is, sisters and brothers. It's not the individual himself. The individual don't have nothing. You know, he can die, do whatever. But if the Lord is working with him, then he can pray to the Lord. In those days, the Lord would do something to people. But see, we don't have that luxury. All I can tell you what's going to happen to you in the future. But if you did too crazy, I, I know what I will do. I will throw you out of here. <laughs> so if you don't want to be thrown out of here, be afraid. Be real afraid. <laughs> Male or female. Think about it. Here, when the Lord got ready to look at, give Joshua the reins of Israel, look what he did here. Let's start at verse 3. Joshua 3 and 7. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, uh -huh. that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. See, now he's going to magnify, starting this day. To let the people know, just like I was with Moses, I was with you too. Because the Lord let you know. That you're going to do the same thing that Moses do. Therefore, the people have to obey. Go ahead and read. Verse 8. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, uh -huh. saying, When you are come to the brink of the waters of Jordan, you shall stand still in Jordan. Uh-huh. And Joshua said... Listen, now, all of the priests, when you come to the water, stand still in Jordan. Let's see what's going to happen. Skip down to verse 13. Verse 13 and read. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord... The Lord of all the earth uh -huh. shall rest in the waters of Jordan. Go ahead. That the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. He said, now I want you to order the priest to go and cross the Jordan, which all going to come there. As soon as the priest's feet hit the edge of the water, the river Jordan going to stop. It's going to separate right there. The ones that come and flowing down is going to go up heap, and the one over here. He said, do that. Because the Lord wanted to make a point. Skip down to verse 15. Verse 15 and go ahead. And as they that bear the ark were coming to Jordan, uh -huh. as the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, go ahead. for Jordan overflowed all his banks all the time of harvest, uh -huh. that the waters which came down from above stood and rose upon the heap very far uh -huh. from the city Adam, that is, beside Zaratan. Go ahead. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jer Jericho. Now, when the Lord, now yeah, that's why one of the reasons Jericho was scared too. They could see all that. Right. When the Lord stopped that river, He didn't let it stop. He didn't stop it from flowing. He just let it pile up and pile up and pile up while the rest go on. And the people crossed the Jordan dry shot. In other words, they walked on dry ground. Go ahead and read. 17. And the priest that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground uh -huh. in the midst of Jordan. Go ahead. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Now all of us passed over. Let's go on the 14th chapter. Uh, I mean, say 4th chapter. Start at verse 14. 4 and 14. 4 and 14. Okay, go ahead. On that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel. Uh -huh. And they feared him. As they feared Moses all the days of his life. Now that's what it was all about. See, in that day, the Lord magnified Joshua just like he magnified Moses. And the people feared Joshua from that day on. Yes, sir. Because they knew then that Joshua was will in the power of God. The Lord know his creation, sisters and brothers. Right. Go ahead and read. 15. And the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying. Well, Come, skip, skip down to verse 23. Verse 23. And go ahead. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you uh -huh. until you were passed over. 
as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, uh -huh. which he dried up from before us uh -huh. until we were gone over. Now, see, he letting you know, just like he did with Moses, he did the same thing with Joshua. Joshua is wielding the same power that Moses wielded. That is the power of God, yes, sister and brother. He said, so you better fear because the Lord know this creation. This creation operates out of fear. Yes, he sir. know who he put here. And so when he picked his leaders, he made sure that something happened that the people feared them. Now let's look at Samuel. Let's go into 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. That's why people go, well, I don't know what the, you know, I don't care what the Bible said. That's what you should care. Yeah. Because the Lord created everything. He had it all recorded. And he know this man. He know what it takes to make this man tick. He know what it takes to get his attention. And if we took it to the people the way the Lord gave it to us, 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 us preachers, sister and brother, it wouldn't be so much mess on this earth. Right. But the first thing we had to do, we had to walk in the law too. So now, it wouldn't be no mess, but ain't nobody taking it to the people. You got the Bible, it's a big secret. Land in the face of everybody. It's a big secret. 16 and 1. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? You know, like Saul was the first king of Israel. Saul kept messing up after a while. The Lord got rid of Saul. I'm through with him. And Samuel, being a man, just like all us men, we know somebody, we've been with him. You know, I'm the one that appointed him. And he mourned all the time for Saul. Finally, the Lord got tired. I said, man, how long are you going to mourn for me for Saul? Seeing it out and rejecting him from being king over Israel. Go ahead and read. Fill thy horn with oil and go. Uh -huh. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, uh -huh. for I have provided me a king among his sons. So he said, now fill your horn. I got me somebody else. You mourning over Saul, I'm going to pick me another king. Get on down there and anoint him. But I'm going to show you what happened when Samuel showed up in the coach. Skip down to verse 4. Verse 4 and read it. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake uh -huh. and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? Ain't that something? When Samuel showed up, the elders trembled. Because they remember the old days. You know, maybe the youngsters see this. The problem is the youngsters don't know. That's why I tell, like, right now, they don't even teach about slavery or none of that stuff in the schools now. No, no, they don't no. know. They don't know about the, uh, the youngsters don't know about the balcony in the movie that I had to sit in. Right. They didn't know about the colored water fountain that I had to drink from. I used to have to sit on the back of the bus. The youngsters don't know that, sister and brother. You understand? So now they're walking around, cocking, doing stuff, and getting in trouble because they don't know where the lines are drawn. These things we have to tell the youngsters. So now the elders knew the power of Samuel. The elders knew what Samuel did. Do you understand? And knew Samuel was a, a dangerous man. He brought his king Agag that Saul didn't kill. Samuel hacked him to pieces. So when Samuel, I'm telling you, see, people don't know the real men of God. Yes. Men of God will do whatever. They'll plead with you. They'll pet you. Yes. They'll kiss you. And if you be stupid, they'll cut your head off. Make it plain. Whatever the occasion calls for. Yes, sir. This is what people don't understand. A right judge is the one that executes the sentence, whatever it is. And sometimes the sentence is not always what you call beautiful. But if he is righteous, it is always just. Yes, sir. All right. Think about it. So they tremble when Samuel came. Not because Samuel himself had the power, but Samuel had the power of God. He was willing that, that power. Is right. Like they were afraid of Moses, willing that power. They were afraid of Joshua because he had the power of God. And he can will that power. And take it for whatever it's worth, sisters and brothers. Through the knowledge of God, he'd give me the power to show you how to become God. Praise yeah. the Lord. It is healed, sisters and brothers. So people don't fear God no more. And let's show you why. Let's go into Proverbs, the first chapter. Proverbs, the first chapter. That's why I thank all the time. I thank God all the time that I'm old enough to have started on the ground floor. 
but I'm still young enough to take care of business. Yeah. I'm, to me, I am in the perfect position. I'm old enough to be wise, but I'm young enough to do stupid things if I have to. <laughs> Good position. Sometimes you, you've been around and you get some wisdom, but you're too old to perform on it. If you can receive that. We're going to start at verse 5. Proverbs 1. Chapter 1 and verse 5. Go ahead. A wise man will hear, and will increase learning. See, this one, a wise man will hear, and he'll increase learning. Go ahead and read. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. And a man of understanding. He will listen to wise counsels. Yes. He ain't got time to be over in a whole lot of folly. Skip down to verse 7. Verse 7 and read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Uh-huh. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Look. He said, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But you get people that's so full of the Holy Ghost, they don't want no instruction. They don't want to be told nothing. nothing. Why is it that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge? Because you have found out who you're dealing with, and now you're afraid of it. It's all that simple. Then you... Find out who Jesus is, and you are afraid of him. Jesus was the one that drowned the whole world. Yes, sir. I mean, the whole world yes, just sir. left eight people living. Yes, sir. This guy killed 70,000 Israelites just because David County. Killed a whole tribe of Benjamin men and children except about 500 men. Because they defended a handful of sodomites. So you don't know who you're dealing with. This is Jesus I'm talking about. He is extremely dangerous, sister and brother. But don't nobody fear him because they ain't got no knowledge. They ain't got no knowledge. Skip down to verse 22. Verse 22. Go ahead. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? What is simplicity? Well, I don't have to read nothing the Holy Ghost is going to teach me. What I'm say. full of the Spirit and it's going to guide me. I don't have to do no work. The Lord did it all for me. That is simplicity. How long? And, it's, and what do they call the people that go for that? They call them simple people. Simple yep. How long will you simple ones love simplicity? Go ahead and read. And the scorners delight in their scorning, uh -huh. and fools hate knowledge. And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Go and try to tell somebody that Christmas is pagan and take them to Jeremiah the 10th chapter. See how they're going to fight and hate you. Sure is. Teach, brother. Teach. Tell them you can't get three days and three nights from Good Friday to Easter Sunday morning. You become the pariah. And they're going to hate you for it. But the Bible just told you what they are. I don't care how close they are to you. Make it plain. Go ahead and read. 23. Turn you at my reproof. Uh -huh. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Uh -huh. I will make known my words unto you. He said, turn you at my reproof. Because he's going to buffet you somewhere along the line. He said, if you do, I'll pour out my spirit unto you. And I'll make word, known my words to you. I'm trying to get your attention now. Sometimes he slap you upside the head. Sometimes he brings some drama in your life. Yeah. He is trying to get your attention. He's a turn at it. And if you do, I'll let you know what you have to do. This is his word. Proverbs, the second chapter. Second chapter, verse 1, 2 and 1. Proverbs 2 and 1. Okay, go ahead. My son. If thou wilt receive my words and have my commandments with thee. He said, if you receive my words and have my commandments with you, what's going to happen? Skip down to verse 5. Verse 5 and go ahead. Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord uh -huh. and find the knowledge of God. Then, if you understand the Lord and read his scripture, sisters and brother, and receive his word, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. Yes. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and you will also... Receive his knowledge. 
But you have to read to understand it. All this stuff the Lord got in this Bible is for our consumption. It is that we might know who we dealing with. He said, you'll fear the Lord then. Go ahead and read. Six, for the Lord giveth wisdom. Uh-huh. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Now, that's the only one that gives it, sisters and brothers. People always tell you about some great so-and-so, this great brother here, and this is a book that was written by so-and-so, so-and-so, and, and I got this off the Internet. If it don't come from the Lord, it ain't about nothing. It's all that simple. Make it plain. Here's the one that gives wisdom. Out of his mouth come understanding. Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10, and go ahead. When wisdom entered into thine heart, uh -huh. and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, go ahead. discretion shall preserve thee. Ain't that something? Then you become discreet. You become careful in how you, yes, what sir. you say and how you behave yes, and what you do. You start to checking out the logistics now. You just don't walk into the house. I'm here. Might be 15 <laughs> people getting shot and, and stabbed in there. You didn't walk up here. You just another piece of meat added to the barbecue. What you're going to do is you're going to look in, maybe look in the window. Crack the door and look in. What's going on in And you're going to watch what you say. And you're not going to let your anger control you. You're going to learn to be discreet, sister. And brother. Yes, sir. That's because you become wise now. You start looking at where you're going. Now. And when somebody tells you something, you don't take it advice by. You listen. Don't reject it. But you go and you check it out. All right. If it's good, accept it. If it's wrong, then reject it because you have a foundation on which to reject it from. Yes. We have people all the time. You ain't no Israelite. I said, now why did you acquire that most important information? <laughs> Could you please reveal to me your source? Right. Well, well, you know, I just believe. I thought so. <laughs> you don't argue with them. Move on. Go ahead and read. Discretion shall preserve thee. Uh -huh. Understanding shall keep thee. And understanding is going to keep. I say it all the time. I used to be a real mean bully when I was growing up. So mean that a whole school jumped. I could have ran and got away. I didn't say that. When the guy asked me, you think you're bad? I said, yeah. <laughs> when we go whoop your black in the back, come on with it. <laughs> After that was over with, I was educated. If I had to do it all over again, I would run. <laughs> I was such a foolish young man, and when I went home, I had one of them old beaver skin hats. White. It was red. <laughs> With my blood, I got big bumps here and there because the whole school, and my dad looked at me, and he started laughing. <laughs> he said, yeah, I heard about you. I've been hearing about you. Because I was foolish. But I was educated. Yes, Ain't never took a whooping since. <laughs> what verse are we? That was the end of verse 11. Go ahead, uh, finish that. No, that was the end of verse 11? Yes, sir. So, sisters and brothers, the whole thing is, when wisdom comes, you get discreet. And understanding will keep you. Keep you out of a whole lot of things and keep you from a whole lot of drama. Because... You have some wisdom and knowledge now. This is what the world is supposed to do. The world is where it is because you have no wisdom because the preachers have allowed the law. In fact, they didn't allow the law to be taken away. They took the law yes, away. So, true. so now, if you don't have no law, then everything is lawful. Let's go into Romans, the 10th chapter. Because this, you know, the Lord is in all kind of ways, old and new, he's letting you know what has happened. You can have a lot of energy. You can have a lot of zeal. You can have a lot of uh, uh, spunk. But it means nothing, nothing if you don't have no knowledge. It's just like you saying, I'm going to run out there and I'm going to jump in this pool and I'm going to kill this alligator. You're full of knowledge, but you ain't figure how am I going to kill this alligator? So you jump in the pool in all your zeal and become a dinner. Right. 
because you didn't think first, how am I going to kill him if I jump in the pool? Well, I can't kill him. Well, maybe I won't jump in the pool then. Understand and kept you then from committing suicide. Let's start at verse 1, Romans 10 and 1. Go ahead. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is uh-huh. that they might be saved. Mm-hmm. For I bear their record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. He said, I want my people to be saved. He said, I bear them record they have a zeal of God, but they ain't got no knowledge. No knowledge. I bear the same record. Every day. Look, wait till tomorrow comes, Sunday comes. You ain't going to be able to drive nowhere. I mean, everybody's going to churches. All old women with the white dresses. The cars double park. I mean, you can't move. And they ain't got no knowledge. Brother Boy, you can't say they ain't got no knowledge. If they had some knowledge, they wouldn't be going to church on Sunday. This is what people don't understand. That's not a a thing of passing judgment. It is calling it what it is. The man that jumped off the mountain will hit the ground. Oh, brother, you shouldn't say that. Well, let him jump off. That's all that's, all that's simple. They have a whole lot of zeal, but no knowledge. Right. So when you don't have no knowledge and you got this zeal, you got to do something with it. Go ahead and read. Verse 3, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness uh-huh. have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now, by they don't have God's righteousness, but they got to do something. We got to go to church and do something so they establish their own righteousness. Yeah. They don't know that the Lord is going to put it on, the, going to put the kingdom on the ground, but they got to do something. Well, the Lord is in heaven. Well, maybe He wants us to come up there. Yeah, we're going to go to heaven. That's what they teach. So you say you won't have to keep the law no more. So you got to come up with you some sin. So what do you come up with? Smoking and drinking and dancing. That's what they say. That's right. You got to come up with something. Yeah. Somebody call you to a dinner. And you walk in the house, you expect to see some food on the table. So if you're going to go to church, you expect to line something. Because everybody tell me to stop sinning. So now you got to come up with your law that says what sin is. Smoking and drinking and dancing. Some of the real energetic ones, shopping in my shopping malls. <laughs> What verse? We have verse 4. Go ahead and read. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness uh-huh. to everyone that believeth. Now see, when you don't have no knowledge, you think that, see, see, Christ ended the commandment. No, that's the law of honor and sacrifice, sister and brother. Because that's the law that couldn't do no good. To tell you in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, that the blood of bulls and goats could never rese- uh, uh, remove sin. Right. That's why Christ had to come because the law of animal sacrifice couldn't remove nothing. So when he died, that's why the veil ripped in the temple that ended animal sacrifice he ended it but if you don't know that you think that's the command that is right not knowing that the biblical definition of sin is the transgression of the law that is what sin is ain't no other definition skip down to verse 11 and go ahead for the scripture saith Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Uh huh. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Uh huh. For the same Lord over all is richer to all that call upon him. And I agree with that. Go ahead and read. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, and I agree with that. But you got a little, a little hitch here. Let's see what it is. Go ahead. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How can you call on somebody that you don't believe in? Go ahead and read. And how shall they believe in him on whom they have not heard? And how can you believe in somebody you ain't never heard of, sister and brother? The world don't know. It's just like the lesson I put Jesus the unknown God. They don't know who he is. Because if they knew who he is, they wouldn't think that he nailed the law to the cross. Jesus, Jesus gave the dietary law. Jesus gave the Ten Commandments. Jesus gave you the Sabbath day. And Jesus had a man stoned to death for picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. Yes. Now he's going to come in the flesh and say, it's all right. Teach. I made a mistake. I can't serve that God. Yeah. All right now. So how can you believe in him? You don't know who he is. You say, I'm going to heaven to be with my God. But Jesus said, I'm going to sit on the day, throw on a day. That's right. You don't have a clue who he is. So how can you serve a God in whom you don't believe? And how can you believe in a God of whom you have never heard? Finish that verse. And how shall they hear without a preacher? How can you hear without a preacher? The Lord made it clear. 
He ain't coming and speaking in your ear. There's no little being where the Holy Ghost just spoke to me. No, no. If you want to hear something, you got to have one of me. <laughs> Make it plain. That's why the unit was in the wagon, come back from Jerusalem, reading Isaiah. Philip come up there and say, understand now what you read is? He said, how can I unless a man guide me? That's right. That is the way the Lord set it up, sisters and brothers. And if you're going to learn about him, you're going to get it this way, or you don't get it. All right. Good so how can you hear unless you have a preacher? Go ahead and read. And how shall they preach except they be sent? And how shall the preacher preach yeah. except he be sent? Finish that. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now look, how can the preacher preach except he's sent? By whom must he be sent? And how can you know, sisters and brothers, if God sent him? Let's show you. Then you can decide whether you got a preacher or not. I'm going to even put me on the scale. Let's go to Jeremiah 3 chapter. Teach, brother. Jeremiah 3. It's just one thing with this word of God, sisters and brothers, when you weigh in somebody else, you weigh in you too. Because the word of God don't have no respect to a person. No, sir. Anybody that steps in the street, that's who's going to get ran over. <laughs> that's why I like this God. Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 3rd chapter. Jeremiah chapter 3. And we're going to start reading at verse 14. Jeremiah 3. And 14. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 14. Okay, read. Turn, O backsliding children, uh -huh. saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city go ahead. and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Uh huh, what's he gonna do? Go ahead. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. Go ahead. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Yes. If you have a pastor sent from God, a preacher sent from God, you know something. Yes, sir. You know that you can't get three days from Friday to Sunday. You know that the kingdom is going to be on earth. You know that Jesus is going to rule a thousand years, and you know there's going to be a first resurrection, and people in it are going to help him rule a thousand years before the Father comes. Once you know that, then you know that the Father coming at the end of the thousand yes, years. You know why that flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Because there ain't going to be none left. You know that. Teach. Teach. I know you know that because I taught it to you. Make it plain. But where you come from, you thought you was going to heaven. Where you come from, you thought you could pray over anything and eat it. You ain't never heard of abomination of desolation. European economic community, you ain't never dreamed in your wildest dreams that that was the resurrection of the old Roman Empire or either Babylon the Great. Never cross your mind. Make it plain, brother. Teach. So the place that you take, you left, was your preacher a preacher? You tell yourself. Let's go on to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Make it plain. Hey, sisters and brothers, it is high time to put an end to this foolishness. It's high time. Anybody want to get salvation, want to be saved, come here. We teach you how. People say, well, that ain't the only place that you can get salvation. I, say, I don't know about the others. I know about this one, so I can only vouch for this one. I'm not saying you can't go nowhere, but I don't know the other places. I know about this one. Because, sisters and brothers, this thing is getting closer and it's closer. In case you haven't noticed, the Lord has speeded this thing up. Yeah, yeah. Look like you just come out of last weekend, right? And you in this one. How can everybody feel it at the same time unless something is taking place? It's time, sisters and brothers. It is time for foolishness to come to an end. Because I'm going to tell you something. Playtime is over with. Ecclesiastes 12th chapter. Ecclesiastes 12th chapter. Let's start reading at verse 9. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 9. Okay, go ahead. And moreover, 
because the preacher was wise, uh -huh. he still taught the people knowledge. Ain't that so? Because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. That's a wise preacher. Go ahead and read. Yeah. He gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Look, he listened real good. And he sought out and set in order many scriptures, sisters and brothers. I mean, many. He had to get up. He had to study. That's why I tell people, how can you be a preacher if you're lazy? Can't do it. When you're sleeping in the morning, I'm up studying. Because I fear God. And I refuse to deliver the wrong thing and get myself in trouble. Yes, sir. Refuse to give you the wrong thing. So I study. I seek out. I do research. Before I cried my own little library in my room, I used to be in the library all the time. Yes, sir. Because I want to make sure that what I give you is what the Lord wants you to have. But I can't give you something until I understand. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. Yes. And that which was written uh -huh. was upright, even words of truth. Now, that's what he was trying to find out acceptable words. And that which was written, even the words of truth. Them tell me sought out the word of God, sister and brother. Yes, sir. And you don't have to go and read every book on the planet. What the book said? Go ahead and read. The words of the wise are as golds. That's, that's gold. That's something that drives you. Go ahead, sister, uh, brother. Go and ahead. as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies. And it's not no novice teaching. You know what you're talking about. You can tell a building that's built by a master carpenter and one that's built by a tinkler. That is right. That's right. Master Cobb, everything is cut right. Everything is in place. Everything fits. Yeah. Pink will just throw together some boards. Now you got to start fixing about putting tar on it to close up. See, right. you a tinkler. <laughs> but the words of the wise are like gold systems. That's something to drive you. And they are just like the words of a master and what he's doing. Go ahead and read. Which are given from one shepherd. By how many shepherds do you get it? One shepherd. One shepherd, sister and brother. One shepherd. No other. And that's Jesus. That means he gave it to you in Genesis. He gave it to you in Malachi and he gave it to you in Revelation. One shepherd. That's why he said he of Alpha, Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Yes. He said, I am the first and I am the last. One shepherd. But when you have a preacher that was sent by God, you know this. So now you know how the way to preach it on. Well, brother boy, you know, I got, you know, I got faith in God. What God do you have faith in? I'm going to show you how you establish faith. Let's go into Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans, the 10th chapter. So these things, sisters and brothers, the Lord put here. And the world is messed up. Why? Because didn't nobody bother to read it. Preacher went to church and forgot to read the source. And you have never paid no attention to the fact that this guy read a verse, if he did that, and he talked to you, and he talked to you, yeah. and he talked to you. But ain't nobody read. Now you got the book open in your lap, but he talking. See, you used to didn't have the book. But since we've been around here 30 plus years and reading this book all over the world, the preacher said, I got to do something. He put it on. It's just like, like Mick Jagger said. You know, he said he used to stand up and just sing, you know, the head of the Rolling Stone. He said, but then he come on one time after Jane Brown. Jane Brown skated across that stage. And <laughs> he said, I got to do something. He couldn't do it as good as Jane Brown, but he's been doing something ever since. Right. Same thing about these preachers, sisters and brothers. They got to do something. Because we've been here a long time, and we've been here in a lot of places. So we know what this book is saying. That started at verse 16, Romans, the 10th chapter. That's verse 16. Okay, go ahead. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. See, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. Go ahead and read. For Isaiah said, uh -huh. Lord, 
Who has believed our report? Go ahead. So then faith cometh by hearing. Uh huh. And hearing by the word of God. So now look, they have not all, so the Lord then, then preached this gospel, sisters and brothers, and he had it, he heard it written in the book. So how beautiful is the words that the preacher brings, but everybody have not heard, obeyed the gospel. That's why I said, Lord, whom have we believed our report? Yes. So faith cometh by hearing, sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. That's how you develop faith. Hearing what? And hearing by the word of God. So if you have never heard the word of God, how can you believe in the word of God? Can't do it. Then if you don't believe in his word, how can you believe in him? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. You have to hear first, sister and brother. Faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So what is it that you have been taught? What is it that your teachers or your preachers have been preaching you? Is it the word of God? Maybe that's why you don't have no faith. What you have is a bunch of emotions, like Paul was talking that about. That is right. right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Emotions mean nothing if you don't have no knowledge. You, we're going to see that before we get out of here. So what is it that you've been teaching, been taught? Let's go into Matthew, the 15th chapter. Matthew, chapter 15. The Lord is very, very plain in what he put out here. Cause so can't nobody take nobody on. You can't take on nothing. You can't take on same sex marriage. You can't even take on the ev uh, 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 evolution. You can't take on nothing because you don't know nothing. It's all that simple. Like brother was mentioning today, brother Julius about this guy. He had to check a guy when they asked for uh, being a mason. People don't know if the mate Freemasonry is satanic worship. I mean, directly say, I mean, without any deviation. Right. And so I'm a Christian, but I'm a Mason. No, you ain't no, you might be a Christian, but <laughs> Christian, but you ain't the Bible Christian. You that other Christ that Paul warned you about. You follow that angel that got kicked out. And I mean, that is wide open. Just read a little bit and you see it's all about Satan. Yes, sir. It's on the top of the table. So why is it you don't know? Because you have not been taught. But you have been taught something, but you haven't been taught the word of God. Right. 15 and 1. Go ahead. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, uh -huh. which were of Jerusalem, saying, uh -huh. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Uh -huh. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. That's what our neighbor said, used to say to me until I rained on them. <laughs> One block club meeting. Why don't you put a Christmas tree up in your... In your front yard, in your front porch. And why don't you put lights on your house? I went there and I went to a block club meeting. When I got through rain and they ain't never asked me another question like that. They get by my house, they do that. Because I told them who their God was, where he got his power from, and where they going. It's all that simple. I was young then, I was real abrasive. I used to like to see you bleed once I had to knock your teeth out. But I've got better since I got older. That's all right. So he said, why do your disciples not wash their hands? But what did Jesus say to them? Go ahead and read. Verse 3. But he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Now, he said, why do you also transgress the word of God by your tradition? And that's what man do. Go ahead and read. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. Uh -huh. And he that curses father or mother, let him die to death. Now, if you go in there and read that, the Lord told you to honor your mother and your father without condition. That's right. It didn't say if she, he's a good father, or if he brought home money, or if she cooked for you, or if she wasn't, or if she ain't no dope head. Jeez. It didn't say none of that stuff. But look what he said, y'all said. Go ahead and read. Verse 5. But you say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift. Uh -huh. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, uh -huh. he shall be free. Now, but y'all said, but look, have you taken care of your father and your mother? 
then that's all you have to do with them. You don't have to honor. And you shall be free. But the Lord said, what did this do when, you tell, when they was telling the people that? Go ahead and read. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect uh -huh. by your tradition. He said, and that's what's going on now. The traditions have made the commandment of God to have no effect on people. God commanded you to remember the Sabbath day, this Sabbath day, yes. and keep it holy. But the sun worshipers have a tradition. They worship the sun on Sunday. You know, like S U N D A Y. Spell it sometime. And then you look around and say, when is this on the whole earth is spelled like this? The, three, the first three words, the Sunday. You come up with the song. <laughs> By their tradition, yes, sir. they have made the commandment. Jesus said, the command, God commanded you. Yes, sir. This was the second, the first command that he gave you after he got through telling you how to handle him. So it had to be important to him. He commanded you. He said, but you have made the words, uh, uh, a commandment of God to have no effect on people. Go ahead and read. You hypocrites. You hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, uh -huh. saying, uh -huh. This people draw near to me with their mouth uh -huh. and honor me with their lips, uh -huh. but their heart is far from me. Look here, you can't keep them piling Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Christ, Christ, Christ. Oh, my Lord. Is he a bunch of hypocrites? Isaiah spoke about you. You come to me with your mouth. Right. You give me lip service. You bump and you're gone. But you ain't doing nothing else. So but when you do that, what's happened? Go ahead and read. But in vain, they do worship me, uh -huh. teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. But in vain, they do worship me. You know what vain means? You're doing it for nothing. nothing. You're going to church Sunday morning, you there to Sunday night. <laughs> Go home tired and beat up. What have you accomplished? Nothing. Because Isaiah called it, you're teaching. Because of your teaching, you have made the word of God to have no effect. Let's go in Isaiah and look at it. Isaiah 29 chapter. Isaiah 29. Because I look at all these holy evangelicals they got, po political evangelicals. Yeah. These are the meanest people on the planet. They don't want to help the poor people. They don't respect the old people. And they got, you know, God didn't bless me to get mine, so you go get yours. Maybe everybody can't go get theirs. God's business is people. If you're going to let your elderly go hungry, you're going to let your young go hungry, and you don't take care of the children, who are you evangelizing for? Every time I hear that, if it wasn't so scary, I'd laugh because it's a joke. I just look at it. But then all that is built out of no teaching, and they will do evil stuff because they have no fear. Isaiah 29 and verse 9. I'm showing you why they ain't got no fear, sister and brother. Isaiah 29 and verse 9. Okay, read. Stay yourselves in wonder. Uh -huh. Cry ye out and cry. Go ahead. They are drunken, but not with wine. And he's talking about religious drunk. So they are drunken, but he said, I want you to stay yourself in wonder and cry out. Because they are drunken, but not with wine. Go ahead and read. They stagger, but not with strong drink. Uh-huh. For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Go ahead. And has closed your eyes. No, he said they stagger, but not with strong drink. This ain't no whiskey drunk. This ain't no wine drunk. It is a doctoral drunk. Yes, sir. A religious drunk. And he done poured out on your deep sleep. It's so deep until if your body read the Bible to you, you can't even see that. Make it plain. Look what he says word has become. Go ahead and read. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, has he covered. No, you ain't talking about just the people in the seat. The prophets, your rulers, and your seers. These are the preachers, guys like me. He done covered them with yes. blindness. Go ahead and read. 11. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. How can you, how can you read a book that's sealed? Go ahead and read. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. Uh-huh. And he said, I cannot. For it is sealed. I can't read the book, man. It's in a box. It's sealed. Don't bring it to me. He said, that's how the vision will come. Go ahead and read. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Uh -huh. Saying, read this, I pray thee. Go ahead. And he said, I am not learned. So you get one that ain't educated. He can't read. 
And you put a book in front of him, so read this. I can't. I can't read. I ain't had no school. Well, what you doing in the pulpit then? Make it plain. Make it plain. Then we read in Ecclesiastes that because the preacher was wise, he taught the people knowledge. He sought out good and right words. Yes, sir. If you can't read, how you going to seek something out? Oh, Pastor so-and-so can't read a lick, but he sure can preach. <laughs> what is he preaching? Is he preaching? <laughs> so now, and the book would come like one that's sent past to a man that's not learned. He said, I can't read it because I'm not learned. Go ahead and read 13. Well, for the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth uh -huh. and with their lips do honor me, Go ahead. but have removed their heart far from me, uh -huh. and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Look, that's why they're hypocrites, sisters and brothers. And that's why their minds are well away from the Lord, because the fear of the Lord yes. is taught by the precepts of men. Yes, so this man ain't teaching you, you know. He ain't telling you about the lake of fire. He ain't showing you the example of what Jesus did to people. In fact, you don't even know Jesus was in Genesis. It was him that was told Adam and Eve, stay away from that tree. Because if you knew that was him, then you know that was him that gave the Ten Commandments. You know that was him that had a man stoned to death for breaking the Lord's Sabbath day. Because you have been taught by the precepts of me. Yes, sir. That's why I ain't no fear. That's why I was looking at I was I was looking at the uh, uh, news and they said they took a new poll now for the first time it said there are more people on the side of saying sex marriage than there ever been. Yeah. In fact, there are more for it than against it. Right. You know why? Cause ain't no fear. None. That's right. And why is there no fear? Because. They have not heard the word of God. And why haven't they heard? Because they ain't got no preachers. It's all that simple. I come in and say, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a preacher. I'm a minister too. I said, is that right? Uh-huh. Uh, when did Christ die? Well, he died on Good Friday. When did he roll? He's Sunday morning. I said, okay, I'll see you, partner. <laughs> you just told me what you are. Yep. Fear toward me, he says, talk about the precepts of Precept me. Therefore, me. you don't fear, because men like pretty stuff. Go ahead and read. 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, uh -huh. even a marvelous work and a wonder. Uh -huh. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, Go ahead. and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Ain't that something? So where's your wise man? The Lord is talking about Israel here, among this people. So if the teachers are blind, how can the students see? And the wise men say, they, wisdom has perished. Does it take a wise man? You know, it, 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 it don't take very much wisdom to know that you can't get three days from Friday to Sunday, sisters and brothers. And it don't take a lot of wisdom to know when you're looking at Sister Jones in the cabinet that this is still Sister Jones, whether she's breathing or not. Because when the Lord formed her out of dust of the ground, right. and breathe, breathe into her nostril, she became a living soul. Yeah. So he took the breath away. She is a dead soul, but it's still she. <laughs> Make it plain. It don't take a rocket scientist system, brothers. So what have they done? They think, and then you come and read this book to you, to them, they think that they're fighting you. Skip down to verse 16. They think they're fighting you. But who is they dealing with? Go ahead and read. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Uh-huh. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Ain't that something? So you're turning things up just like a steam of the potter's clay is going to be broken to pieces because you are the work. You're telling God that he didn't make you. Go ahead and read. Or shall the thing framed say unto him that framed it, he had no understanding? And they're telling, and, and that's what's going on. you telling the Lord you are the thing that's framed that he don't have no understanding. That's what they say. Think about it. You say, you didn't make me. That's why they're talking about evolution. I talked to a medical uh, physician about 25, 30, about 30 years ago. He out there called himself prophet, whatever. He gonna tell me, well, you know, I said, where did man come from? Well, you know, he was a mucus 
that comes, that hit the water and cross. I said, where did the mucus come? Well, you know, it came from the cosmos. I said, well, where did the cosmos come from? Right. Well, see, brother, we shouldn't uh, 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 talk about things that we don't understand. I said, wait a minute now. You would have me think that you understand everything. Right. Ah, uh, me and you got to talk in my office. You're going to still do the same thing. What's the difference? You just don't want me to embarrass you in public. Because you're saying to the Lord that he don't know what he's doing. And you done turn things upside down. Yes, sir. The Lord said, I'm coming to the earth. You said, no, I'm going to heaven. The Lord said, the first day, seventh, seventh day is my Sabbath. You said, the first day is the Lord's Sabbath. Did you say the Christian Sabbath? That's right. <laughs> Make it plain. So you're telling the Lord he lied. The Lord said everybody's ever died. I'm going to raise them up at the last day. Yeah. You're telling the Lord, no, my mama's in heaven now. Ain't you calling him a lie? Yeah. People don't understand what they're doing, sister and brother, because they don't have no knowledge. Therefore, they don't have no knowledge. They don't have no fear. Let's go into Revelation 2nd chapter. Because the Lord is letting you know about a church here. This is the one that spread all this bad doctrine. And let me show you. They don't be trying to kick against the Lord. They hold fast to the name, but you listen to their conversation. This is the problem. You don't listen to the conversation. Somebody walk in the door, hi, I'm your best friend. Oh, he's a nice guy. He said, my friend. He got his hand in your pocket. <laughs> but he picking your pocket. Oh, no. He said, he's my friend. Revelation 2 and 12. This is the church that the Lord writing the message. Sent the angel to. 2 and 12. Go ahead and read. And to the angel of the church at Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. This is these things says Jesus. Go ahead and read. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Well, this is a church now. I know your works and I know where you dwell. Even Satan's seat is there. Go ahead and read. And thou holdest fast my name uh -huh. and hast not denied my faith. You hold fast my name? Christ, Christ, Christ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you have not denied the faith. Go ahead and read. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, uh -huh. who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. It called the church in Rome is the one that killed all the yes, early sir. Christians. Yes, sir. Them. They chased them down and killed them, fed them to lions and everything else. Even what Satan dwells. Go ahead and read. But I have a few things against thee. Uh -huh. Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of a Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. See, they ain't got no original doctrine. All this is stole from the Hamites. You understand? I can tell you where they all come from. Every one of the doctrine that you call Christian nowadays. Yes. Sir. And they did not start with the Gentiles. So you hold the doctrine of Balaam. Go ahead and read. To eat things sacrificed on the idols and to commit fornication. And you taught Israel was all right. Well, they ain't, well, I didn't teach them that way. You tell them ain't no law no more. That's pretty good acceptance to me. Yeah. Go ahead and read. 15. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Uh-huh. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly uh -huh. and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Now, you know, I'd ask the next person, who are the Nicolaitans? God said he hate them. Yes, sir. Nickel mean conquer. Laetin mean the laity sisters and brothers. Yes. But he said, but one thing you can find out about it, Satan's seat is there. So let's go and see who got Satan's seat. Let's go into Revelation 13 chapter. The Lord is putting a clear message on the table, and ain't nobody reading. Ain't nobody reading. Revelation 13 chapter, Revelation chapter 13, and let's start at verse 1, 13 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, uh -huh. and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, go ahead. having seven heads and ten horns, uh -huh. and upon his horns ten crowns, uh -huh. and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Do you know who this is? This is the resurrection of the Roman Empire or the resurrection of the Babylonian Empire. And who is the religious part of the Roman Empire after his resurrection? Papa. Don't you know it's not the Roman Empire no more, sisters and brothers? It is the Holy Roman Empire. 
and you are a Catholic no longer. You are a Roman Catholic. But no, I'm the Baptist. Yeah, but you got the Christmas tree from the Roman Catholic. Yes, sir. You got Easter from the Roman Jeez. Catholic. You got heaven from the Roman Catholic. You understand what I'm saying? So now, here he comes. We're looking at it now. This, in other words, this is Gentile doctrine. Go ahead and read. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, uh -huh. and his feet were as the feet of a bear, Go ahead. and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Uh -huh. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Oh, so that's where Satan's seat is. So the seat is not among the temporal people. His seat is among the religious people because he was talking to the church, wasn't he? So when Satan give you his seat, what you going to teach? Skip down to verse 4. Verse 4. Go ahead and read. And they worship the dragon, which gave power to the beast. You worship the beast, therefore you worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. Go ahead. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? Now that's what's going to happen. It's been down through the years, the Gentile dynasty. Ain't nobody been able to fight the Gentiles. These are people we call white folks of Europeans. But where did they get their power from? Satan. What is this organization in Rome? Which is, and the man going to move to uh, the temple? That's Satan's organization. He gave you Sunday. He gave you Easter. He gave you heaven. He has sought to change the law, times and the laws. Right. And done a pretty good time. Yeah, thank you. So who is Satan? The one that Nicolaitan. These are the people that have assumed the priesthood. Assumed it for him. When Jesus went on back to heaven, now he said, I am the vicar now. I'm the vicar. I'm the replacement of the Son of God now. But you don't have no knowledge. Therefore, you don't fear. But the Lord it's going to teach you to fear, sisters and brothers. And he gave you example to people that don't serve him the way he want to be served. Yeah, Let's yeah. go into 1 Chronicles, the 13th chapter. 1 Chronicles, the 13th chapter. Because, sisters and brothers, it is, it is scary when you have this understanding and you see all this stuff that's going on. You just look. But, you know, you don't have no power, so you like the one that the Lord was talking about in the days of Ezekiel. They just mourned for what they saw. We don't have no power to fix it. What we do is we teach the people that will listen. And the day going to come when that same organization that have assumed the priesthood is going to stop you from doing that. But you don't even know that. You're supposed to be representing God. How can you ask it that you're going to kill somebody for preaching about God? That's a problem. Yeah, it is. You're supposed to be representing God. You should want all the people to talk about it. This is here, sisters and brothers, when David had built his house and everything, and he's doing good, the Lord and gave him rest from all his enemies. He decided to go up and bring the Ark of the Covenant from one location and take it to Jerusalem, which was the capital. That was a good idea. That was a good thought. It was a godly thought. Let's see. It. Let's start at verse 6. Verse 6, go ahead. And David went up, and all Israel to Baala. That is to Gachat Jerim, which belongeth to Judah, to bring up this the ark of God the Lord, uh -huh. that dwelleth between the cherubim, whose name is called on it. That's where the Lord is still dwelling between the cherubim, and he's still holy. Go ahead and read. And they carried the ark of God in a new cart out of the house of Abinadab, and Uzzah and Ohio drave the cart. Now they got him a brand new cart, ain't never been used. And put us and another man was driving the car. Go ahead and read. And David and all Israel played before God uh -huh. with all their might uh -huh. and with singing and with harps uh -huh. and with psalteries and with timbrels and with cymbals and with trumpets. In other words, they were shouting and dancing and yes. playing music. Yes. You know, you see it all the time in the church. And boom, the room, boom, 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 boom. Because everybody's happy because you're bringing up the ark of God. How could anything be wrong with this? But well, let's see what happened. Go ahead and read. And when they came unto the threshing floor of Shaddan, uh -huh. Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. Now the ox stumbled, looked like the ark was going to fall out of the cabinet. Uzzah grabbed it. What happened? 
And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, uh-huh. and he smote him because he had put his hand put his hand to the ark, and there he died before God. Wait a minute! Look at all this shouting and all this godly reveling and all this Holy Ghost full of cavorting. Why would God kill this man? He meant well, but he shouldn't have touched it. Go ahead and read. 11. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. Uh-huh. Wherefore, that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. Go ahead. And David was afraid of God that day, saying, How shall I bring the ark of God home to me? Now, all of David shouting and all his holy reveling, right. he discovered fear. Because right. now he started to ask the question, How? Shall or how can I bring yes. it to me? He should have asked that at first. Go ahead and finish. 13. So David brought not the ark home to himself to the city of David, uh-huh. but carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. Go ahead. And the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months. And the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. So the Lord showed him. Now he took it to this guy and he parked the ark in his house. He scared of it. Then the Lord told him, wasn't nothing wrong with the ark. He started to bless this guy's yeah. house. So wasn't nothing wrong with the ark. The problem was somewhere else. And let's find out what the problem is. Let's go in Chronicles, the 15th chapter. And that's Obedidum. Obedidum. Okay. okay. Chronicles, chapter 15. Let's start at verse 1. Because David, looking at all that blessing that at the house of Obedidim, he said, something, hey, something must be wrong. Then he got to thinking. Okay. And he checked, I'm pretty sure, he, he, it came to him because he knew the law. Yeah. Verse 1, go ahead. And David made him houses in the city of David and prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched for it a tent. Uh-huh. Then David said, none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. Oh, First thing is, none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. Go ahead and read. For them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. Now, oh, so this other than this other guy wasn't either my, uh, 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 wasn't a uh, Levite. Levite. Skip down to verse 11. Verse 11 and go ahead. And David called for Zadok and Abiathar the priest and for the Levites, for Uriel, Asa, Isaiah, and Joel, Shemaiah, and Eliel, and Aminadab, uh-huh. and said unto them, You are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Uh-huh. Sanctify yourselves, both ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel unto the place that I have prepared for it. Now look, if you had done that at first, others would still be living. So he talked to the priests and said, I want y'all to sanctify yourselves. Yeah. Clean yourselves up and get ready to go up and deal with it. Yes. Why? Because, go ahead. 13. For because you did it not at the first, uh-huh. the Lord our God made a breach upon us for that we sought him not after the due order. Now, because you didn't do it right at first, yes, sir. the Lord made a breach upon us. A man died because y'all didn't do your job. So what did David put the blame? He put it on the priest. Yes. Well, see, he didn't no, all. He put it where it belonged. Where it's belonged. Yes. Sir. It's supposed to be. This is the priest's job. When they, David said, "Look, we're gonna go up and get the ark of the covenant," the priest said, "Wait a minute, David. Let us sanctify ourselves. And let us what, make whatever preparation we gotta make. Then we'll go up. Then they wouldn't have put it on a new bag. They wouldn't have got, and they would have got." The priest, they pulled the staves out, and they would have got the staves, and they would have walked it all the way back. It wasn't to be ridden on a cart. That's why the Lord put staves on it, so you wouldn't touch it. But because they didn't do it in due order, a man died. But you know how, notice how happy they was when they was doing right? If you're going to do right and be happy for it, right, learn how to do right, right. Because the Lord said, when a man get wisdom, that gives him discretion, don't it? And he said, and knowledge will keep him. 
If they had the right knowledge, that he kept this man from losing his life. That's right. Think about it, sister and brother. You can't overlook this stuff. Let's go into Numbers, the 21st chapter. Because you have to learn, sisters and brothers, that when you mess around with God, you got something coming. And that's what the world don't know. You don't serve God the way you want to be served. You ain't serving him. Like David, them, they had a whole lot of zeal, didn't they? But it's obvious that at that time they didn't have no knowledge. So they're going to bring the cart up the way they want to bring it up. Yeah. And because of that, a man died. And whose fault was it? The priest. David put it away because y'all didn't do your job. A man died. This, sisters and brothers, was written here for our consumption. He put it here so we would know, so we wouldn't make the same mistakes. You get a hole with a, a, with, with a pothole in it, you mark the pothole and you tell everybody, turn, you go, get over to the left side when you get here, otherwise you're going to bust your tie on the right. pothole. That is right. Knowledge. Knowledge. 21 and start at verse 4. 21 and 4. Okay, go ahead. And they journeyed from Mount Or, Mount or by the way of the Red Sea. I'm sorry, in Numbers, did I say Numbers? Yeah, okay, go ahead. By the way of the Red Sea to compare the land of Edom. Uh -huh. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Go ahead. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Uh -huh. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? See, these people spoke against God and against his, his minister, sister and brother. Man, it's, you think that, well, that was then. It's still going on. God just ain't as direct now. But he said something to Jesus. They had Jesus say something other. He said, let the wheat grow with the tares. Yes. I will separate them at the harvest. Yes, sir. So don't think you getting away by doing wrong. You just getting by. Lord, I'm waiting on you at the end of the line. I'm going to warn you about that, too. But go ahead and read. Wherefore have you brought us up out of the Egypt to die in the wilderness? Uh -huh. For there is no bread, neither is there any water. Go ahead. And I was so loath that this light bread. Ain't that something? That light bread is bread from heaven. Yep. Yeah. Lord gave them water out of rock whenever they got thirsty. Now they're going to kick against angels' food, as the book said. Yeah. God got mad. When God got mad, get mad, somebody's in trouble. Go ahead and read. Verse 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, uh -huh. and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. So he sent snakes among them, and they started biting them, and they died. Go ahead and read. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Go ahead. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us, and Moses prayed for the people. See, we see. I'm telling you how man is. He don't know that he done sin until he done done something stupid. But the people nowadays don't even have that luxury. No clue. Right. Because at least they was taught in the days when they come out of Egypt, sister and brother. Moses taught these people, so they knew when they had sinned. Nowadays, person don't even know when they sin. This minister have grievously wounded this creation. So he said, you have, we have sinned. Go pray to the Lord. Go ahead and read. Eight. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent uh -huh. and set it upon a pole. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Uh-huh. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serp serpent had bitten any man, any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Now look, the Lord dealt with him. Not only by their faith, but through fear. Faith come by hearing. Yes. They heard what Moses said. But when they got bit, fear made them look at that snake. You understand? And I know it was a fear only. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been complaining. They got them in that position in the first place. If they had had fear, who going to complain against God? So the Lord said, you don't feel me? I'm going to give you something to fear. I'm going to give you some snakes. He didn't take away the snakes. He let them stay there. Might have been there all the rest of the time in the wilderness. You get up in the morning, the snake latched on your leg. Now you got to go outside the tent and look up on that snake. The whole thing is, sisters and brothers, it is fear. That's what makes men obey God. And anybody tell you something different, they are lying to you. Because the Lord don't change. You can be in a good place with it, but the day that you violate, right. he gets you quicker to a bad place. 
Let's go into the book of Jude, the little book just before Revelation. Before Revelation. But see, when the people don't teach the people about God, they don't fear him. You know, I'm going to give it to you straight, sisters and brothers. A lot of people don't want to hear it. But a grace, the greatest mass murderers in the whole creation is the minister. It is him. It is the minister. Mass murder. But I ain't supposed to say stuff like that. That's not politically correct. Jude, and on a chapter, so we're going to start at verse 3. Verse 3. Go ahead and read. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you. He said, when I gave diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, sisters and brothers, it ain't no, you ain't, uh, you not uh, blessed and highly favored. Make it plain. It's Make it the plain. common salvation. The Lord said, this is what you do to get saved, and anybody that do it, that's going to get saved. Yes. They're going to get saved. And anybody that don't do it are not going to get saved. So much for highly favored. <laughs> I gave them to read of you of the common salvation. Go ahead and read. It was need for me, for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. He's not he's telling you, if you're one of the people that got some understanding, you have to defend this thing. This is urgent for me to write to you because somebody's coming. Go ahead and read. For there are certain men crept in unawares uh -huh. who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Now, they didn't creep in through the back of the congregation and sit in the back of the, ch the church. They come right on up and they crept in in front of you. That's how they got you, sister. Bro. Go ahead and read. Ungodly men. Ungodly. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Now, the grace that Jesus gave us a chance to become God. He gave it back, the chance that Adam took away from yes, him. Sir. And instead of him teaching you how to get that, he's talking to you about money. Yeah. They're going to tell you not to worry. You don't have to know nothing. All you got to do is believe on Christ what and you're going to be saved. Yeah, so and we just went through that, didn't we? Can't believe on the Christ that you don't know about. Go ahead and read. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And they denied him. You know how? Because they say you don't have to keep his law. You don't have to honor his Sabbath day. You don't have to keep his dietary laws. Yes. All this stuff, he volunteered to us. We didn't ask. Moses didn't ask him for that. He did it all by himself. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believed not. Listen, I'm telling y'all now. Y'all know better. So, but I'm going to bring it to your memory because you don't forget how the Lord saved the people out of Egypt. But still, he killed them in the wilderness. The one that didn't believe. Go ahead and read. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, uh -huh. but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And them angels, them devils that you running around, they used to be holy angels until I found out they followed behind, followed behind Satan and sinned against me. I threw them out. Yes, sir. And got them on the chains of darkness. You can't see them, but they're there. Yes, sir. And I'm saving them for judgment. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Even in Sodom and Gomorrah, uh -huh. and the cities about them in like manner, Go ahead. giving themselves over to fornication. Now look, Sodom and Gomorrah, and all the cities around them, giving themselves over to fornication. Go ahead and read. And going after strange flesh. And going after strange flesh. You know what strange flesh is? When a man go after a man, and a woman go after a woman. Yes, sir. He's given this as an example. What happened to him? Go ahead. Are set forth for an example. Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Uh huh. Likewise, also these filthy he said, Look, he said, I gave I, these people, I kill them, and they're also set for eternal fire. But for one thing, he said, yes, set sir. forth for an example. Yes, sir. You know what an example is? Something he put out there. So now, I ain't never crossed this bridge. I wonder what happened if. If I cross this bridge, then you go back in the past and see what happened to the last people that crossed the bridge. They got across. No, this bridge is tricky. Time you get in the middle, it breaks and you drown. Right. Oh, well, I ain't going to cross this bridge. Because you saw the example. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. By polluting the Sabbath day. Go back and look at the example. All right. Man went out and picked up sticks on the Sabbath day. Yes. They stoned in the day. Oh, well, I can't do no work on the Sabbath day. That's right. 
But we don't look at examples. You know why? Because the preacher has taken them away from you. Yes, sir. That's why I tell people all the time, I ain't trying to fight nobody. All I'm doing is sitting an alternative on the table. You've been looking at this all the time. I'm not trying to convert you. I just say, here's an alternative. Have a look at this. That's all I ask you to do. I ain't going to sit there and try to coach you. Leave it on the table and walk on away. Because the book says, whosoever will, yes, let him come. Yes, sir. So that means I can't dra drag you kicking and scratching. What verse are we? We have verse 8. Uh huh. Likewise also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. This is what the Lord called them. He ain't talking about street people. He's a minister. Call them filthy dreamers. Defile the flesh. Despise dominion. They don't want to be ruled over by God. And they speak evil against dignity. They speak evil against the Sabbath. Day. Yes, sir. They speak evil against the Lord sitting to bring the kingdom to the ground. They speak evil against the dietary law. They keep speak evil against his commandments. That's right. But what did they go for? Skip down to verse 11. Verse 11 and go ahead. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain uh -huh. and ran greedily after the error of Balaam uh -huh. for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. So if they gone in the way of Cain, that means they're murderers. And they run greedily after gain like Balaam did. And they're gain saying, like gain says, one to do something for money. You understand what I'm saying? Like Korah. So these people ain't concerned with the word. They getting what they talk about all the time. Money. So therefore, they ain't teaching you the word. Therefore, you don't fear God, sister. Yes, sir. Let's go into Philippians, the second chapter. Paul said a little bit of snippets like this, and don't nobody pay that no attention. Philippians chapter 2. We're going to read one verse. Verse 12. Philippians 2 and 12. Philippians 2 and 12. Okay, read. Wherefore, my, belo my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, uh -huh. work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He said, look, you know, I want you to obey. Not because, whether, like, don't have to obey while I'm now. You obey when I'm not there. Yes, sir. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because if you don't have no fear and you don't tremble at the presence of the greatness of God, you ain't going to get involved in it. You're going to go with the flow. Whatever feels good, sisters and brothers, that's what you're going to do. The Lord knows his creation and his servants that he sent. They know his creation. They know what you'll do. I know what you'll do and what you won't do. What will you do? Everything else anybody else will do if the conditions are right and you don't have no knowledge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the consequences of your behavior. And that's all the Lord is saying to the preacher. Tell them I don't want this. Tell them what I'm going to do, how I'm going to reward them if they do what I say. But also tell them what I'm going to do to them if they don't do what I say. We don't want to go there. Let's go into Jonah, the first chapter. The preacher going to do what God wanted him to do. And if you don't do it, he's going to give you a reason to do it. And if a preacher refused to repent, then in Jonah's case, he'd have told that whale, okay, you can digest him now. <laughs> Think about it, sisters and brothers. This God that we serve is a dangerous God. Yes, sir. And I sure wish somebody would listen to me when I tell them that. I mean, he is a dangerous God. Anything among man's thing, you can die and get away from it. You can't get away from this cat. He so he is so mean until he said, "No, you ain't gonna die and escape me." I just don't want to get rid of you. I want to make you pay for not accepting all this goodness that I'm offering you. 
This guy is scary, sister and brother. Jonah chapter 1. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Jonah 1 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, uh -huh. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. Uh -huh. For their wickedness has come up before me. Now he wanted him to go and cry against Nineveh. See, Jonah didn't like Nineveh, sister and brother. Because Nineveh did. Now, these are the Syrians. They did a whole lot of harm to Israel. And he said, I don't want to go down there and preach because these people might repent. Mm -hmm. So he's gone down there and, and prophesied to him. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord uh -huh. and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So Jonah couldn't be a, uh, an experienced prophet. He was a novice prophet. He was a novice prophet. Just coming to the, he just, that probably was his first calling. And the Lord said, go on down there to Nineveh. No, I ain't going to do it. I'm going to run away from God. This man thought he could run away from God. Go ahead and read. Four. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea, uh -huh. so that the ship was like to be broken. Now the Lord started to educate the prophet then. Let him know you can't run away from me. So he sent all of a sudden a big wind, the ship about to be broke. Skip down to verse 7. Let's see what happened. Go ahead. And they said, every one to his fellow, come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose this cause this evil is upon us. Look, they knew something was going on. All of a sudden they see us calm. And all of a sudden, bam, they're in trouble. Listen, let's, let's, you know, let's cast some lots and see who done brought this up on us. Go ahead and read. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. And it fell on Jonah. <laughs> so they're going to go to Jonah now. Skip down to verse 11. Verse 11, and go ahead. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? Uh -huh. For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, Take me up. And cast me forth into the sea. Uh -huh. So shall the sea be calmer to you. Uh -huh. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Then the prophet realized you can't run away from God. Right. Then what you going to do? What, could I, what can we do, man? What are we going to do to you? He said, man, throw him overboard. Because I know this is because of me. Now they tried to keep him doing it. Right. They tried everything. Right. But then finally they had to get down to it. Skip down to verse 15. And go ahead. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. Uh huh. And the sea ceased from her raging. Ain't that something? It's all over the place. The ship rocking, and all of a sudden, Jonah hit the water. <laughs> Just come. <laughs> then the Lord taught somebody else fear now. Go ahead and read. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. Uh huh. And offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. All of a sudden now, Jonah got some converties, didn't he? Right. They feared God and they made vows to God. Because that's what fear would do to you. Because they, they met Jonah's God for the first time. Yes. And they feared him. Go ahead and read. 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So the Lord had a fish out there. You didn't know the Lord could speak fish, did you? <laughs> he told him, go on over there and hang out around that ship. I'm going to get you a meal thrown over. Threw him over, fish ate him. Let's go on to four and one, uh, 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 two and one. Two and one. Go ahead and read. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Uh, now, Lord, now he prayed. Go ahead and skip down to verse 10 and let's see what happened. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto the fish. I told you you can speak fish. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to the fish. Go ahead. And it vomited out Jonah up on the dry land. He just threw him up now. He got enough. He threw him up. Now when he get through, what did, Jonah, what did the Lord say? Let's go on to Jonah 3 and 1, verse 1. Go ahead. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Uh-huh. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh. He didn't fool around that time, didn't he? Because now he had learned the fear of the Lord. Yes, sir. Lord knew how to get your attention. So he arose and he went to Nineveh. Go ahead and read. According to the word of the Lord. Uh-huh. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. Go ahead. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty years days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That was a direct message, wasn't it? 
Go ahead and read. So the people of Nineveh believed God uh -huh. and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. So all of them believed God. All of them put on sackcloth. All of them. And the king gave a decree. I want everybody to get ready. And I want everybody to humble this God to this God uh, that Jonah's talking about. Skip down, uh, skip down to verse 10 and let's see what happened. Go ahead. And God saw their works. That they turn from their evil way. Uh -huh. And God repented of the evil that he has said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. Ain't that something? So God saw their works. And they turned away from the evil that they was doing. Then the Lord repented and turned to the, away from the evil that he was getting ready to do. Yeah, he did. But why did they repent? Fear. Yeah. Fear. Why did Jonas go? Fear. Yeah. Why did the people on the ship make vows to God? Fear. Because that is what's going to make man obey God, sisters and brothers. Let's go into Proverbs, the 16th chapter. He will talk all that love talk that they want. But I'm telling you what's going to get you in the get you salvation. Yes, sir. Fear. Because a lot of stuff I'd like to do, sister and brother, I always say all the time, I don't serve God because I am holier than anybody else. I serve God because I'm scared of it. I've seen the evidence. Yeah. I believe it. I know what he'll do to you. I've read history after I read the book and saw what he did to kingdom after kingdom after kingdom. I have seen it. I fear this guy. Proverbs 16, and because I fear him, I do all I can to walk in his word, sisters and brothers. It ain't always easy, but it's doable. Yeah. Proverbs 16, we're going to start reading at verse 2, 16 and 2. Okay, go ahead. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. See, that's what you got to look at, sisters and brothers. Everybody's right in their own eyes. Everybody's clean in their own eyes. But the Lord is checking your mind out. Yes. You understand? He know where you live at. Go ahead and read. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. He said, now you commit your works to the Lord, then your thoughts will be established. That's why if you read his word, his word is going to establish your thoughts, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 6. Verse 6 and read. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Yes, sir. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. That's by mercy, God's mercy he had on us. Iniquity is purged. Go ahead and read. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. What did the Lord say, men? What reason for man to depart from evil? By the fear. Fear. The fear of the Lord, man depart from evil. Even man adopted laws like God adopted laws. You run this red light, you're going to get a ticket. You stick up the bank. If you don't get shot, you're going to jail. They got laws on the book. And when you go to court, the judge judges you according to the law that's on man's book. If man got a book of law that you are judged by, why do you think that you ain't going to be judged by God's book of law? By the fear of the Lord, man depart from me. Yes, sir. The fear. Let's go into Malachi, the first chapter. Malachi chapter 1. Don't nobody fear him, sisters and brothers. Therefore, don't nobody depart from evil. They don't honor the Sabbath day. They don't care nothing about nothing. And I lay it all at the feet of the preacher. I'm going to tell you like it is. I go stupid. Y'all know enough to walk away from it. In fact, you know enough to correct me when I cross the line. So you decide to go crazy. You can't put this on me. You're going to burn for yourself. Malachi 1, let's start at verse 6. Malachi 1 and 6. Go ahead. A son honoreth his father, uh -huh. and a servant his master. Go ahead. If then I be a father, where is my honor? Uh -huh. And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests that despise my name. And ye say, where have we despised look, our name? He said, son on his father, and they serve his master. Yes, sir. I'm your father, where is my honor? 
I'm your master. Where is my fear? Yes. That's why Jesus told you not to call any man father or rabbi, which means master. He said, you don't have but one master. He yes, said, that's me. Yes. He said, so if I be your master, where is my fear? Oh, priest that despise my name. So you hate his name. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Go ahead and read. Seven. You offer polluted bread upon mine altar. Uh-huh. And you, and, you, and you say, wherein have we polluted thee? Go ahead. And that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. Go ahead. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? Now, what, that's what he said. He ain't talking about no animal sacrifice here, sister and brother. You're going to come up and you're going to give me a spiritual sacrifice, but it's blind. You don't know how to serve me. Because you told him all you got to do is believe on me, and you ain't never told him who I was. It is right. You have never, in you telling him all you have to do is love the Lord, and you haven't told him he got to fear me. Yeah, wow. I'm the guy that drowned the whole world Jeez. and saved only eight people. You don't fear me? This is what people don't understand. No fear. Therefore, you don't fear, you don't serve. I know love sounds all nice and cuddly and sweet and warm, but it don't work. What verse are we? The middle of verse 8. Go ahead and read. And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Uh-huh. Offer now to thy governor. Go ahead. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? Now you get your children and you don't educate them. They don't know nothing. They can have all kind of jobs open. But you take them up there, they ain't qualified because they ain't educated. That's right. And you think, he said, offer that to your governor. See if he'll accept it. Uh -huh. He ain't going to hire you. The Lord ain't going to hire you. This word of God is in everybody's house. It's in this Bible, in every, on the table, in the bedroom. They use it for everything. Well, we're going to record the, my baby's birth. And the death of grandmama. Why are you doing all this recording on the day that we got married? Why are you doing all the recording? Why don't you read a little bit of it? Make it plain. He's been offered it to a governor. Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and go ahead. Who is there even among you that will shut the doors for naught? Uh-huh. Neither do ye kindle a fire on Mount Altar for naught. Uh-huh. I have no pleasure in you, said the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. He said, what's among you? It's talking about ministers. You understand? Yes, sir. We're kindling a fire for nothing. Which of you would make an offering to me for nothing? He said, your offering, I don't accept it. You're getting paid, but you ain't delivered up nothing. Like Isaiah 55 said, why spend your money for that which is not bread? Right. You are sending me servants that don't know about me. How can they obey and serve me? They don't know about my law. How can they keep it? They do it. How can they keep it? Who is this talking? Go ahead and read. 11. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, uh -huh. my name shall be great among the Gentiles. You know who Gentiles are? Those are Europeans and white folks. What is the greatest name among them, sisters and brothers? Jesus. Jesus. So that's who's talking here. This is not the Father talking. Father ain't never talked. Jesus tell you in the fifth chapter of St. John, you ain't never heard his voice at any time or seen his shape. That's right. Jesus is the one. Yeah. So he's telling all them guys that stand in my position, which one of you will show up to church and teach for nothing? Which one of you will labor to get the people's salvation for nothing? I say it all the time. I used to anyway. If they pass a law, say the preachers can't get paid no more for preaching, there'll be a whole lot of empty churches yes, tomorrow. Sir. Yeah. Tell the truth. And you can't take them no love offering from. <laughs> tell the truth. Make it, plain. Them Make it plain. Make it plain, Pastor. Make it plain. Don't get me wrong now. That's because I don't take a salary. The book still says workman's worth of his high. You understand? Don't get me wrong. Personal labor. And that's the only source of income he have, then he should. But then the Lord said, why spend your money for that which is not bread? Yeah. So he said, look, which one of you never kindled a fire on my altar for nothing? 
Which one of you would make a sacrifice for nothing? Right. If you take Sarah off the table, you'll find out not many sisters and brothers. He said, so from the rising of the sun, from the going down of the same, my name should be great. Who you think you're dealing with? Go ahead and read. And in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name. Uh-huh. And a pure offering. Uh-huh. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. Now we know what name that is. That's what I'm trying to tell my Hebrews. Okay, then. You tell me that Jesus is, ain't no J at all this here. Tell me the greatest name among the nations and yes. among the Gentiles. All right. Tell me. When you tell me the name, I tell you who is the one that dictated this book. Jesus, sister and brother. All right. The priests are the ones that's supposed to have. In Israel, the priest nation is dumb. Because we've been taught by the Gentiles. Skip down to verse 14. Verse 14 and go ahead. But cursed be the deceiver, uh-huh. which hath in his flock a male, and thou and sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. Now look, we had a capacity cursed to be the deceiver that, that bring up me a, 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 a small, a, a, a inadequate offering. Go ahead and read. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, uh-huh. and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Is it because I'm a great king yes. and my name is dreadful yes. among the nations? But he's dreadful, sisters and brothers, to the ones that know about him. But I guarantee you, after the great tribulation, he's going to be dreadful. His name going to be dreadful to everybody. Yes, sir. But then most people don't even know about the great tribulation. And some people that are stumble into it. Yes. Oh, yeah, see, but the church going to be taken up before the great tribulation. Read that to me. The Lord, the books are after the tribulation of those days. Then the sun going to be darkened and the moon going to uh, 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 refuse to shine. Then you're going to see the sign of the coming of the man, God, son of man in the cloud. After the great tribulation system. So all of these people name offered up in the name of Christ. They flawed because you haven't taught us preachers. We haven't taught I'm going to teach you, sisters and brothers. You can do with what, what you want. I'm going to teach you. I am not trying to save you and not save myself. The Lord warned me of what he's going to do to the watchman right. that don't deliver his word. Right. I'm going to give it to you. You get mad if you want. I ain't going to never go back to that place. That ain't your problem. My problem. That is yours. But wherever you go, you better be taught. So this is the Lord here, sister and brother. Yes, sir. And all this stuff going on, people think God is, is, is okay with it. Let's go into Psalm, the 50th chapter. And I have two more places after this. Psalm chapter 50. You know, people think that's because the Lord ain't saying nothing right now. People think that he is okay with it. The Lord wasn't saying nothing in the days of Noah until he got tired. Then he told, he said, I'm going to kill them all. Then he looked down and he saw Noah. Then he told Noah, look here, I'm going to kill everybody now. But you done found grace in my eyes. I'm yeah. going to save you and your household. But what I want you to do is, you got to show me you believe in me by building your ship on dry land. Noah believed God, so he built him a ship on dry land. And it said he moved with fear. Y'all understand? And because he moved with fear and obeyed God, him and his household was the only one saved in a whole world. So now the Lord ain't saying that everybody thinks, okay, men can marry men, no problem. Women can marry women, no problem. The church should be crying out, sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. It should be crying out. Protest. Yes, sir. And tell the people what's going to happen to them. So remember Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember what happened to Benjamin? Even the Lord said he made that a curse for preachers that hold his word in unrighteousness. Yes. He's going to turn them over yes, to foul affection. Yes. Men with men and women with women. He said ministers that do this. This is an abomination. Yes. yes. But ain't nobody paying no attention? Well, God is all right with it because he ain't saying nothing. Well, let's see about this. Psalm, the 50th chapter. 50th chapter of Psalm. And we're going to start reading at verse 14. See, this is the whole thing. Everybody a New Testament Christian. They don't believe in the Old Testament. Yeah. Not understanding that everything that's written in the Old Testament 
The new, and the New Testament was written first in the Old Testament. Yes, sir. And the New Testament don't have everything that's written in the Old Testament. So you have a real treasure trove in the Old Testament. You better go check it out. Peter told you to check it out. Yes, sir. Verse 14. Verse 14. Go ahead. Offer unto God thanksgiving uh -huh. and pay thy vows unto the Most High. He's offering to thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Go ahead and read. And call upon me in the day of trouble. Uh -huh. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. He said, once you do what you want to do, then you call upon me in the day of trouble, I'll deliver you. Then you should glorify me. But you got to do your part first. Go ahead and read. 16. But until the wicked God said, uh -huh. What hast thou to do to declare my statute? Uh -huh. Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Wait a minute. You got wickedness that's doing it? Yes. Wicked people. Yes, sir. Show up. Get in the pulpit. Yeah. Officers of the church. They're declaring the statutes of the law, but they're wicked because they ain't keeping his law. And they dishonored his Sabbath day. He said, what have you to declare my statutes and take my law up in your mouth? Go ahead and read. Seeing thou hatest instruction uh -huh. and castest my words behind thee. You cause you hate instruction. You're telling people you don't have to keep the law. You're telling people they don't have to keep the dietary law. Teach. You're telling people that every day is the Lord's Sabbath day. Yeah. And when you get too heated, well, we don't know what day the Sabbath day is. They've been changed the calendar so many times. Mm. That's what they say. Every excuse in the world to cast the Lord's word behind you. Go ahead and read. 18. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him. Uh -huh. And has been partaken with adulterers. You don't care nothing about a thief. You don't, and then you go along with the adulterers. Go ahead and read. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Uh -huh. And thy tongue frameth deceit. And you always got something ugly and bad to say something about somebody. Go ahead and read. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Uh -huh. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. Go ahead. These things hast thou done. And I kept silence. The Lord said, look, I saw you do all this evil. He said, and I kept silent. But he's noting it all. Go ahead and read. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as the one as thyself. He said, y'all thought that I was like you. But go ahead. But I will reprove thee. He said, but I'm going to reprove you. Go ahead. And set them in order before thine eyes. And I'm going to set it all in order. Go ahead. Now consider this, ye that forget God. He said, I want you to consider this, all of y'all that forget God. Go ahead and read. Lest I tear you in pieces, lest, and there be none to deliver. Lest I tear you in pieces. And ain't nobody going to be able to deliver you. I'm looking at all this stuff you're doing. Yes. I'm looking at all this li these lies you're living. Yes. I'm looking at all this adultery. I'm looking at all this falsehood. Teach. I'm looking at all these abominations. He said, I ain't saying nothing. Yeah. And because I haven't said anything, you think I'm one of y'all. Yeah. Make it plain. He said, but I want you to understand something. Y'all better consider what I've been telling you. Because if you don't, I'm going to tear you to pieces. And there'll be none to deliver. And ain't nobody going to deliver you. Think about it, sister and brother. Think about it. That's why I say you got all these people, everybody happy now because everybody's in one cause. Yeah. Man can marry man. Woman can marry a woman. Yeah. You don't have to keep the Sabbath day. Every day is a Sabbath day. You can eat anything. All you got to pray over. You don't have to keep them old laws. They're too hard. God knew they was too hard when he gave them to you. That's what they say. That's what they say. That's what they say. He said, I'm listening to this. Let's go on to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Verse. Now, what verse is that? 23. Go ahead and read. Whoso offer praise glorifies me. Uh -huh. And to him that ordered his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. He said, now whoso offer praise, they're going to glorify me. All these people are kicking against Jesus. Yes. He said, you better glorify me. And all of those that order his conversation aright. Yes, sir. Stop talking all this food and start dealing in truth. Those are the ones that I'm going to show salvation. Nobody else, sister and brother. Think about it, sister and brother. Think about it. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. You go, and ain't nobody teaching you nothing. That's why people say something, well, you know, they, 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 uh, they, they go to too many scriptures, and they hold class too long. Teach. Look, think about what you know. It's going to take me some time to bring you out of darkness so you can deliver yourself. I can't save you. You understand? I can't save you. So I'm going to have to teach you how to save yourself. That takes a minute. 
they don't do nothing else with the rest of the day anyway. Make it plain. Make it plain. Hebrews 10 and verse 22. 10 and 22. Hebrews 10 and verse 22. Okay, read. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, uh-huh. having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now, he said, let's, let's, let's draw with a pure heart. And pure water that your body's washed with the pure word of God. Go ahead and read. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. He said, now you can't be flip-flopping. Hold fast. Skip down to verse 26. Verse 26 and go ahead. For if we sin willfully, uh-huh. after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, go ahead. there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. He said, look, I done died for you, and the animals can't die no more for you. So if you're going to willfully sin, ain't no more sacrifice for sin. Go ahead and read. But a certain fearful looking of judgment and fiery indignation. All you have to look for is the lake of fire. Go ahead and read. Which shall devour the adversary. Uh-huh. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Uh-huh. Of how much more sore a punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy, who has trodden underfoot the Son of God, uh-huh. and has counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing. Now look, sisters and brothers, people think, well, oh, Moses was harsh. They stoned people together. He's how much more sore punishment you think you're going to get. Yes but not accepting this sacrifice that I've made for you. Go ahead and read. And has done despite unto the spirit of grace. And you done broke my covenant, and you done thrown my free gift out of the window. Just like you getting an inheritance, and you go out and smoke and drink it up. Yeah. Don't do you no good. Go ahead and read. Verse 30. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. Uh-huh. I will recompense, said the Lord. Go ahead. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Uh-huh. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Now look here, sisters and brothers. We know him that said vengeance is mine. Jesus said that. And he said it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. If you go and you read some of them examples he gave, it is a fearful thing. Yes, sir. And you know this guy is going to get you. Ain't no thing where maybe he'll forget. He don't forget. Let's go to the last place. Job, the 28th chapter. Job chapter 28, and this is the last place. He says, sister and brother, the Lord put all this in here. He wants you to know these things. He had his prophets and his apostles write these things because he wants to save this creation. The Lord said, you don't have any pleasure in the death of a servant. You don't have no pleasure in it. Job 28, and we're going to start at verse 1. Job 28 and verse 1. 28 and 1. Job 28 and 1. Because it's a shame. People don't feel God. You know why? Because people don't know about God. Because right. if they knew about it, that's why I said the beginning of the wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Because then you'd be scared of this guy. Yes. Verse 1. Go ahead. Surely there is a vein for the silver. Uh-huh. And a place for gold where they find it. Uh-huh. Iron is taken out of the earth. Go ahead. And brass is molten out of the stone. He's letting you know that there's a place for everything. Skip now to verse 12 and go ahead. But where shall wisdom be found? But where shall wisdom be found? He said, there's a vein for gold, and iron is taken out of the ground. But where are you going to find wisdom? Go ahead and read. And where is the place of understanding? And where is the place of understanding? Go ahead. Man knoweth not the price uh-huh. thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. So now man don't know, and he don't know how much is what? He don't know the price thereof. Wisdom is what's going to get you immortality. He said, they don't know, and it's not among them. Yes. So where is it? Skip down to verse 23, and go ahead. God understandeth the way thereof, uh-huh. and he knoweth the place thereof. But God know where it is, and he understandeth. Go ahead and read. For he looked to the ends of the earth, uh-huh. and seeth under the whole heaven. And so he looked to the ends of the earth, and he see everything. And this is his conclusion. Skip down to verse 27. 27. Go ahead. Then did he see it uh-huh. and declare it. He saw it and he declared. Go ahead. He prepared it. He prepared it. Yeah, and searched it out. And he searched it out. What did he come up with? And unto man he said, uh-huh. Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. He said, look, man, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. The fear of the Lord, yes, that sir. is wisdom. Go ahead and read. And to depart from evil is Understand. And when you depart from evil, that lets you know that you got some understanding. 
And any person that don't part from evil, they don't have no understanding, sister. So that's simple. So like I said before, fear come by here, uh, or faith come by here, sister and brother, but obedience.